Welcome to Journeys with Jason George, episode 17, Forging the Not-So-Average Wildlife Walking Stick. Welcome everyone to Bonifab Custom. Today we have Jason from Jason George Photography and we're going to be continuing with our, with our project, the walking stick. Night walking stick? No. It's just a we walking stick. Like we can just call it a walking stick. The walking stick, okay. With special features, yeah. right? <laughs> Many special features. Many special features. So. Yeah. Uh, last time on the show, we, we kind of went through a sketch, a sketch of the knife that we're going to incorporate. That's the walking stick. So now we're going to get into the material that we need to make the knife. And then everything else is going to be kind of um, built around that knife. Okay. So as I was explaining uh, a little bit last week, I think we touched on the material we're going to use. Yeah, yeah. We're going to have uh, 15 and 20. We're going to have some 1095, and we're going to have some copper. Some, yeah, some pipe. Some pipe. Some copper too, right? Uh, some salvage copper. Yeah, 100. percent right? Okay. So what we need to do first is we need to prepare the uh, material. So this 15 and 20, we need to um, kind of grind it a little bit, get okay. it cleaned up. We're going to clean it with some acetone. Yeah, yeah. We're going to get our copper. Now the copper is going to come in a little bit later, but we're going to take our copper, we're going to take a cutoff wheel, cut it along um, the length. Okay. And we're going to open it up, hammer it. And, and like make it flat then. Make it flat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we can stack it inside with the 15 and 20 and the 1095. Oh, okay. And we're going to, we got to make sure we clean this also. So we're going to need to sand it, then clean it with some acetone also. Okay, awesome. sound like a plan? Sounds amazing. Okay, let's get to it. <clears throat> okay, so that was a lot of work. Oh, right? That was that was awesome. Okay, see, you can now you, you're getting an understanding of what goes into making it, right? Yeah. So we have our 15 and 20, and you have the 1095 there. Yeah. Do not mix them yet. Do not mix them. Okay, we have the copper pipe that we squashed and yep. we're gonna have to clean all this stuff now and what we're gonna do is we're gonna stack this so we're gonna put one piece of 15 and 20 one piece of 1095 one piece of 15 and 20 and so on and so forth okay and then we're gonna weld it okay so it doesn't come apart we're gonna put a rod like this okay we're gonna weld this together to the end of it so that we can stick it in. Right, right. Instead of using tongs, right? Okay. It's easier to use this. And then we're going to forge weld, which is going to take all those materials and combine them together. But it's still going to be separate. But they're going to be forged, welded together under the iron worker or okay. the, the press. And once we have that, then we can move on to the next step about adding some copper. You ready? Let's go. I'm so, let, yeah, let's go. Okay, let's do it. Look, if I mix these up, don't mix them up. <laughs> I, so you can't tell, like, can you tell right. that that's what I'm asking? Yeah, right now you can't tell. You can't, okay, it, and that's what, that was my question. Right, right. The only way to tell realistically is this one is harder right now. Okay. So this one will bend and this one won't. Okay. So that's, that's the way I can tell. But it, if they were both annealed, you couldn't tell. Okay. Right? Uh, they're both basically the same except for like I said when you put it in acid that you can tell yeah yeah okay. so what we're gonna do is basically start off with 15 and 20 yeah 1095 15 and 20 you can put the 1095 okay so how many of these do we have to do just keep on stacking until we have an even amount When someone makes a knife, this is what? Yes. Okay, we'll finish off with that. That's it. So that's our stack. Okay? Okay. That's so a now, fat stack. Fat stack. So now I'm going to take this stack and then I'm going to get my vise and squeeze it in my vise. Okay. And then weld it. Okay? On the corners around. Okay. And then I can take that and we can start to forge up and forge weld it together. 
So now we're going to take the stack and we want to make sure that there's no air gap. You see, you can kind of see through there. hundred percent. Right. So air is very bad when it comes to making the masks. You don't want air. So you want to make sure that I have my billet and I have my stack inside my vise and tighten it up in a way that I can still kind of weld it here. And and the, it yeah, so you can do weld most of it. Exactly, and then flip it around. And then you do the, the missing side. Exactly, and I like to use TIG welding because it's a little bit cleaner, okay. but you can use any sort of welding for uh, MIG, or stick, and whatever, right? Um, like I said, I have it, so I use TIG welding. Um, okay, so Jason, you're gonna need Oh, oh, we're gonna be... oh I, I actually brought one. Did you? Yeah, yeah. You Hold on. I'll, yeah, yeah, I'll go get it. Okay, you brought a helmet. I didn't thought, think you welded it, but... Oh, I don't. I don't weld, I, but I have a helmet. <laughs> I, I'm learning to play I, goalie. I have an idea. I, I, have a, I have a feeling that that's not going to work so well. No? No. It might work once, and then you can't see anything. Oh, I... Yeah. Well, so I'll lend you a helmet. Don't worry. But that's a cool helmet. Okay, well, I... I wanted just to show it to you, really. That's really, but... Yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> All joking aside, I put on the proper welding helmet. And the reason you need a proper welding helmet is if you look into this light directly, it can actually blind you. So there's a little sensor that will turn on the protective view so that you can look and not get hurt. So what's going on is TIG welding. And TIG welding is sort of like little dots um, if I'm not mistaken and he's just tapping it and heating it up really hot and it's just going to form a barrier and this barrier is so that it doesn't move and then we attach the handle so that it can get put into the the forge it looks actually pretty cool the way it is right now and it's nice and airtight so this is a forge and Rob's built it himself so that he can do these kind of things and it's really cool see the center yeah yeah that's what you got to be very careful before you start squishing it if it's not completely red like a bright red yeah yeah it's not ready to forge weld yet oh, okay when forge welding to ensure a clean weld you want to sprinkle borax oh. on it it sort of helps to make sure that all the like there's no air gaps and it just creates a proper seal and it also looks really cool if I'm not gonna lie I love the way that the borax melts and sort of looks like a plastic being heated it's now starting to get to a good temperature he says one more time with the borax just to make sure that all the sides are sealed and you'll notice, it's only the sides that really get the borax peeled on, or poured on it, right? It wasn't the flat side, it's where those air gaps could be that you want to pour the borax, just to make sure that everything is nice and sealed. And then, just like every step, and back in the forge it goes. And now we go to the step that I think is the most exciting, where you're actually pressing the metal down. You're using this 65 ton press to slowly smush the metal. This is the combination of heat and forging that actually creates and pressure that creates the new product or byproduct of the metals being combined. So now I wanted to try. Rob makes it look so easy. You put it in and you use your foot pedal to push it down. But, oh man, it's a little bit harder than you made it seem. Well, I'm definitely going to have to practice my forging skills. But, 
I think I did pretty well for my first time. And then Rob steps up and he makes it look so easy. He does it one-handed with no real care. But I guess he's been doing it for years, maybe even decades. So I give it another try and I think I'm getting a little bit better at it. Don't give up. Keep trying. You got this, Jay. And this process just keeps repeating itself. You put it into the forge and then you pull it out and you put it in the press. And you put it back in the forge to warm it back up and then you put it in the press. Because every time the press touches it, it cools down. So you've got to put it back in the forge for a little bit for it to warm up. You can tell when it's really warm because it's glowing very brightly. But you can also tell that every time the press is touching it, it cools down. Sometimes you can actually see a little bit of smoke from the spacers heating up too much. Or maybe a little piece of glove hair gets caught there. But look at the size of it. It's growing. It's almost doubled in size, or at least in length. And I can't lie, I think my technique is getting a little bit better. Again, I still struggle from time to time. Maybe I don't push it down hard enough, but I'm definitely getting better. And this process is so much fun. When we first started, it was three pushes for the billet to be completely smushed. And now it's like six. The billet is what they refer to as this stack of metal. That's what a billet is. Or at least that's what I think it is. And look at how long this is. And it's just glowing hot. And yeah, my technique might not be the greatest, but it's definitely improved from that first time. Honestly, it's so hard to focus on getting the press to go down just the right distance because it's so awesome watching it expand. Although it expands just a little bit every time I do it, it's so intriguing and I lose my focus. And wow, look at how long this thing is. And just as I think I'm getting a hang of it, I get another thing pointing out to me. You gotta do it, um, you gotta try and do it quick before it gets too cold, right? Because you can see every time you touch it, it actually gets cooler. A little bit more. You can go a little bit more. Okay, next. Yeah. Okay. And now it's so since my technique was a little bit slow, we started at the back end and started from there. And it works just the same. down too much. You brought that one down a lot. We want to make it even, right? Okay, so down. Okay, that's good. Well, I'm not going to lie. It's my first day of forging and I think I've done pretty well. There's definitely things that I need to pick up and improve on, like my speed and my technique and being consistent on how far I push it down. I'm not as good as Rob, but again, I'm just a rookie. I'm just learning out. But this process, this is insane that you have to do this much work for a knife to be made. Oh wait, this isn't even for the knife to be made. This is just for one part of the knife to be made. Wow. I never actually realized how much work went into metal work. Oh. I guess I shouldn't be complaining too much. Oh. 
I guess back in the olden days, they had to go with a hammer and anvil. Wow. That must have taken forever. And they must be so strong after doing it. Hmm. Well, the product looks half decent, I think. So we got through making the first part, the Damascus, so we can make it into the Damascus with the coffin. Oh, it's, that's the, like, so we've made like the first like press sheet. That's right. That's right. And so we have like two press sheets on the, like the other side. Yeah, after we do this, we're going to cut it. Well, we have to clean it off, cut it, and then we're going to sandwich it between that hopper. Yep. And then we'll weld it again and forge weld it. And it's a big process. How did, it, you, how did you like this part of it? Honestly, this was the first time I've ever done something like that. So my experience with welding like was very limited, but it was pretty cool to how hot it got and also how like the machine was able to like this thing used to like it was small yeah like it was tiny and now it's so big and like i'm excited to see like well like not like we'll see this one but once we put this into the actual blade right. and like peel all of the grossness away um i'm excited to see like that did, did you think it was like that much work involved in making well to be Yes, but no, like, I think it's a lot of work. I didn't realize how much work it actually was. And like, having to put all these sheets together and press it and then back in the, right. and then press it again and like, now, put that, do that. And then you have to now do it again. Like that right. is crazy. And like, like this seems like hard, but we <laughs> use a machine. We use a machine. But like, imagine doing that by hand. Like, like oh my. <laughs> It'd take a long time to do it. Like that would be, like that, I, like got good for that, yeah. Like <laughs> <laughs> That's probably why I had to use the machine and <laughs> struggled with the machine, because I don't have pipes like those. <laughs> well, it's going to give you a new appreciation for forging, forge welding. When you, when you watch, like, if you watch, like, Forge on Fire, you'd be like, hey, you know, uh, I've done that. I, yeah. I'm probably going to start watching all of those things now, because it yeah. has had so much meaning. I, I actually had a kid or a student that I was like teaching and he wanted to learn about welding okay. or become a welder and I yeah. took him to see my my buddies, a um, couple guys and this girl that work in like different areas Okay. so he could get like some first hand experience That's and like cool. yeah. now I can go to him and be like yo I got the forge, <laughs> what are you doing? There you so. go. Alright so I guess we'll clean this off the next video. So. The next video we're going to get into taking this, cleaning it, getting it ready to forge weld again with the copper. Um, anything else you want to add to that? No, I hope you enjoyed it. Or I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did because this was awesome. Thank well, you. Thanks, Jason. And thank you for watching Bonifab Custom. And Jason from Jason George Photography. Check his uh, YouTube out. Don't forget to subscribe, push that button for notifications for the next videos. Thanks. In the next video, we'll actually start making what looks like a knife. But until then, stay safe, have fun, and keep enjoying the wildlife. Bye-bye.